because everybody has imagination or you can inspire a lot nowadays from other artists. It all comes down on how to do it, not what to do. So today I'm going to reveal you five really important tips and tricks to use in your photo manipulations. I am Mr. 23, let's begin. In Photoshop we use selections a lot, especially in photo manipulation. Not always they look so good. So let's fix that. We have this picture, let's take the magic wand tool and I'm going to select the blue area around the mountain. Then on the layer with the mountain I'm going to hold Alt and click on the mask. And if we look closer we'll see that the selection looks good but not good enough. We have those uh, blue fringes on the sides and we don't want that. And now with the mask selected I'm going to use minimum. Maybe you know that, maybe you don't, but you can find minimum under filter, then other and minimum. And here you can choose the radius you can uh, play around with a higher radius and in our case I'm going to use a 2 pixels radius. Now let's zoom in, it looks much better. But the selection looks really bad and still with the mask selected I'm going to filter then blur and I'm going to choose blur more. And now my selection looks really really well and no matter what color I'm going to have on my background, the sky area, my mountain will look really really well. In this example I'm going to show you a selection that I have made with the pen tool. And after that, after I imported the file here, you'll see that uh, my uh, selection looks really well. And in most cases, in a lot of photo manipulations, I can see that people just placed the characters or the objects over there and uh, they look like some uh, transparent PNGs that are just placed on the document. So if we look at the original photo, you'll see that the margins aren't that perfect like our selection is. So the pen tool is the best in making selections but it's too good so you see those margins they look really perfect they are too straight and in reality we have a little blur and we need to have that when we deal with photo manipulation go on the mask and go to filter and here i'm going to choose blur more and let's uh, look now it uh, looks much better and let's apply it again so filter blur and blur more our selection look uh, really really uh, much better right now because it's not that uh, perfect in this example i'm going to show you how to use the lasso tool and to select uh, straight lines like the polygonal lasso tool is doing so with the lasso tool usually we can draw around but it's hard to keep the mouse or the pen of the tablet to draw straight lines. So now I'm trying to draw a straight line but because of my hand shaking I cannot really keep it that straight. And if I'm using the polygonal lasso tool I'm going to be able to select really straight lines. So let's go back to the lasso tool. So now when I'm taking the lasso tool, for example, I want to select this area for no reason, but uh, just to prove the lasso tool can uh, select uh, straight lines, I'm going to hold Alt. So this is the secret. Hold Alt. We are going to click now on the screen. With the Alt pressed, you see it will switch to the polygonal lasso tool. So now I'm under the lasso tool. It's not the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm uh, drawing a straight line on the screen. And the secret is to keep holding Alt. Do not release the Alt while you have the lasso tool selected. So now with the lasso tool, when I finished with this straight line, I'm just going to press on the left button of my mouse and I'm going to uh, continue to select until I release the left mouse button and I'm going back to the straight line. So this is the idea when you don't want straight lines, just click and hold the left click of the mouse and make your selection. And when you want straight lines, just release it and you see that you can draw straight lines with a normal lasso tool. So this is really helpful when you have to make a selection with straight lines and also with free hand movement. 
What I'm going to show you now is really useful when you have to match your character's colors with the background colors. So this uh, picture from uh, Feastock, it's shot uh, perhaps in a studio for sure and it has other color grading and uh, other lights and, and so on. So we need to fix that, we need to match our character color grading with our background uh, color grading. So we need a curves adjustment layer for that. Go to adjustment layers and choose curves. And first thing what you need to do is to clip this curves adjustment layer inside our archer layer. So for that you can click on this little icon and we can clip it inside or if you are um, a person that uh, use shortcuts like I do you can hold alt and click between the layers you see that arrow that points down and if you click between the layers it will add that adjustment layer inside the archer layer. That means that everything that you are going to do here any adjustment will affect only the archer otherwise it will affect the whole picture so having this uh, clipped inside be sure that you are on the properties not on the mask is really important because otherwise it won't work so be sure that you click on the layer thumbnail with the properties we have the auto button if you click on it it will uh, do some things but not enough so go here on the top on the properties and here we need to choose auto options and now we need to play a bit with these color correction options. So first of all we need to find the dark and light colors. We are not interested in the brightness and contrast. So click on this find dark and light colors. Now it starts to look much better. And now we need to uh, look on our background image and to find the darkest color and the brightest color. So for that click on shadows and we need to go on our picture and choose the darkest uh, value that we can find. I think here on this rock we have the darkest, click OK and on the highlights I think on the sky part, this part on the sky we have the brightest area and then click OK and again OK. If you want you can uh, save the defaults but I suggest not to do that. So click on no and now it starts to look much better. So let's play around now with the darkest uh, colors and the brightest colors. For, for that we need to drag this slider around here on uh, the bottom area to darken up the darkest uh, areas of my archer and here on the top will be the brighter area. So we need to drag this a bit to the top and because uh, our black values uh, dropped a lot we need to increase it so drag this point a bit to the top but not too much so we don't have really really dark values. So I think something like that works uh, really nice. Now if you look at before and after this is before and this is after just with curves adjustment layer and this is really nice and really really fast. For the rim lights now I'm going to show you another method that I'm using. It's the one with hue and saturation and uh, with exposure. If we look at the picture we will see that uh, we have uh, this uh, dark area around here on the sky part and some brighter area here on the other part of the sky. So that means we will have some bright lights that will touch her clothing and everything around this area. So we need some rim lights on that area. For that first of all let's create another adjustment layer which will be exposure. Now hold alt the same clip it inside to affect only the archer and let's increase the exposure to around 5. Now double click on the layer and I'm going to drag this slider to the right. This is the blend diff and it will affect the underlying layer which is our archer. I'm going to drag it until we still see some white parts on the margins. Then I'm going to hold alt and I'm clicking in the middle of the slider and I'm going to drag the left slider a bit to the left, something like that. Then if you think it's too much you can drag the right slider more to the right and I think this is enough, it's okay. Now on the exposure mask press Ctrl and I to invert it or click on this invert button. Then having this mask selected take the brush tool and with the soft brush with around 10% flow and now if I'm painting on the sides of my archer on the back where we want that uh, rim light to be you'll see that it will add a really nice and dispersed light on her clothing not uh, focused on one area only. So this is really good to know, to remember to use exposure if you want to disperse the light uh, like that. After we decided that it's enough 
because look at the before and after. Now it looks much better. I'm going to add a hue and saturation. So go on the adjustment layers, choose hue and saturation and the same clip it inside by clicking on this little arrow or hold alt and click between the layers. Then we need to check colorize and uh, now we need to have a color that is close to the sky part. All right, I think this is enough. Now the same thing, I'm going to double click on the layer to apply that blend if. So drag the slider. Now you can see much better because we still see that uh, bluish color on her. Now we need to hold alt and drag the left slider, but not all the way to the left and then click OK. Go on the mask, press Ctrl and I or check this uh, button if you want. And now with the brush selected and the white color, I'm going to paint on the sides and now I'm going to have that bluish color on top of that exposure layer and uh, it will look uh, much much uh, natural. Alright so this is just a few minutes uh, work and uh, it uh, makes a lot of difference if you look at uh, the character before and with just uh, three adjustments it looks uh, like uh, our archer is from that picture. I'm really curious if you learned anything new today, if you knew all the tips or not, just let me know in the comments if you learned something new today from me.